Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. And today I've got something super exciting. I'm actually at the hotel at Adobe Max, but I wanna show you the brand new Photoshop on the iPad. So I'm gonna give you a walk through all the different features and I'm gonna give you a little quick tutorial on some compositing. It's something I've been wanting to show to you guys for quite a while. So without further ado, let's have a look right now. And we can use light or dark theme. We've got different things like that. We can choose the indicator. One that's interesting is stylus only painting. So if we turn that on, that means when you're painting with a stylus, it will work and it kind of turns on palm rejection. So if you use your finger, you can choose the interface, but you can't accidentally paint with your fingers. That's kind of useful. We can turn on the keyboard and these are the keyboard shortcuts that exist right now. So as you can see, quite a few of those keyboard shortcuts are now functioning and as you know you can use that case on the iPad that snaps on. By the way Android does nothing right now this is iPad only. So alright let's jump in and you can see here well, one other thing worth mentioning is cloud documents. These cloud documents are documents that I can save in the cloud and if you've been looking at my Photoshop 2020 release site you will see that we have cloud documents on the desktop version so that means I can save them either locally like I always have or save them to the cloud. The nice thing about saving them to the cloud is they collaborate. So if I click on any of these icons, this will share them. And so I can go from the desktop to the iPad, backwards and forwards, they're compatible with each other. Now, obviously there's some features that are not gonna be on the iPad yet. Um, and of course they're coming, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So what I wanna do is I just wanna start with a photograph. So we go up to the very top here and we're just gonna click on home. And up here we can choose to import and open. So I'm just going to click here and we have three options. We have the files, which as you know, the iPad now with the latest iOS update, we have folders. And so we can save those different files in those folders. We can access them. We can take a picture from the camera or we can go to camera roll. Make sure in the camera roll that you enable it inside your iPad preferences so that you can um, access that. So that'll be under your preferences, photos, and just give access to Photoshop. Um, that's just a security thing. So we're going to click on all the photos here. And why don't we open up a photo that I've taken before. Let's grab this photo here. And notice, there we go, we've got the photo. Now, all the things you would expect, you know, pinch the zoom, you know, two fingers, you can kind of move around. you you got all that kind of stuff, right? If we look on the left-hand side, there's our tools. We've got our move tool, obviously. Then we've got our transform tool. Now, this is interesting. Here's our regular transform. Uh, this will skew and by the way that will undo anything just hitting that little arrow up the top this one here enables us to just do one corner at a time and then we've got the perspective well, let me just make sure we grab the perspective there and right now I'm using the Apple pencil just so you know and of course I can multiple undo here and if you click on here we've got transport we can rotate it by an arbitrary amount we can type it in Great, okay, and then when we're done with that, we just click on done, go back to the main screen. Then we've got selection tools. We can add to the selection, subtract, we can uh, put the selections together, we can set feathering for the lasso, like all these kind of things. And if I hold this down, we can see we've got a quick selection tool, and then we've got rectangular and oval marquee selection tools, as well as the lasso. Next thing that we have right now, the brushes. So if we click and hold, or tap, I should I say, tap and hold, Whenever you see that little arrow, if you tap and hold, you'll see more options. So here's some brushes. Right now you can see there's a few brushes, quite a few, that come with Photoshop right now that you can use. Then we go down to the eraser tool, which is just the brush tool in reverse. Uh, then we've got our fill tools here. And if you look under fill, we've got fill and gradient. Then we've got our healing tools. We've got a healing brush and clone stamp. Then we've got our crop tool. And I can just click done or undo. And then we've got types, we can add our type in there, and then we've got our eyedropper, so we can select pictures. Notice how the foreground background colors are changing. Now these look kind of similar, let me just cancel that. These look a little bit similar to what you've seen before, except instead of having the square, we have the figure of eight or the round. And the way to do that is you just drag. See what I'm doing is I'm just dragging down, and that switches foreground background. Tap to select, choose the color and you're done. Now of course we can go in here, change the colors and all that, and then if we hit the, let's get out of there, hit the D key, it resets foreground background. So that's with that keyboard attached. Then there's another one which is gonna be really important here. This is where we bring in things. So if we wanna add a second layer on here, I can, once again, from the same places, libraries, cameras, camera roll files, all that stuff, 
so we can access some of our Creative Cloud libraries, which I'm not set up right now because I'm in a hotel and I don't have internet on here right now. All right, so let's go to a camera roll and I'm going to grab an additional picture here. I'm going to grab this one I shot at Casper, Wyoming during the solar eclipse and I'm just going to scale this up and see how I can just resize that and of course I can do that with my finger and just click. I can flip these by the way so you can see here we can flip and we can go side to side. We've got all that and of course all the transform tools are there on the left and then we just click done. So here's another thing is if we hit this little thing in the bottom we can hold this down and it kind of gives us different functionality. So there's different things we can do with it. Um, so this enables me to see if I push up, it'll scale centered. You know, if I, so if I'm scaling this, you know, I can do that. So it has different modification functions, kind of like an alt or an option key, shift key kind of in one. So it's just kind of useful. So if you're working with the iPad, you can do that. Let's have a quick look on the right hand side now and see the other things we have. We have layers right now. So if we tap here, we can just look at them in compact view. We can see there's our layers and we can switch between layers. If you want to have the layer options, we just turn that on. And of course, you know, we've got function there like, you know, the eyedropper. And if you look down at the bottom, we've got masks, different things. We can clip them and you can see there's some layer actions, different things we can do here. Um, so that enables us to merge them down, select them, you know, delete them, all those kind of things you would do with the layers under that little ellipse. And, uh, you know, and then if we go down to the next one, here's our layer properties. And this is where we will do things like our blend modes. In fact, let me just click here. And if I tap on there, notice how that just moves to the top so we can see it. And this gives us opacity, blend modes, and we can apply adjustments. So we can apply the adjustment layers directly or we can apply a clipped adjustment. And so the adjustments that are available inside of Photoshop right now, as we can see, brightness, color balance, hue saturation, vibrance, black and white exposure levels. So we've got some pretty basic ones um, that are in there right now. Curves are not there yet. There's a few missing. Now, I just want to mention, just because things are missing doesn't mean that they're not going to be there because um, I know there's a very high expectation for the iPad because I know an Apple Keynote and then the keynote has said the whole of Photoshop is coming to the iPad. This is true, and there's more and more stuff coming in here. Um, uh, let me know what you think in the comments underneath. And by the way, if you're new to Photoshop Cafe and you like uh, Photoshop tutorials, why don't you hit the subscribe button right now, become part of the Cafe crew, ring the notification bell so you know when I upload a new video, which is every single Tuesday usually. <laughs> and if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.